Okay, so this exact value lesson we did in grade uh, 11, okay, it's just kind of amped up obviously in grade 12. So a couple things to know with our XYR ratios, okay. Our XYR ratios, these are the ratios for anything general, okay. So this doesn't always have to be on the unit circle, okay. But when we specifically talk about the unit circle, so when we talk about the unit circle only, exclusively, we can do this. Sine of the angle can equal just y. Why can I do that just on the unit circle? Because the radius is 1. <clears throat> so I don't need to do a divide by 1. So cos, you can just go x. Tangent, you can't do anything different, OK? So this is only for the unit circle. Does that make sense? Why? OK. Unit circle only as well. Cosecant and secant. We can flip the y value around and we can flip the x value around. Okay, because on the unit circle, all those things are in fractions usually, right? So flipping fractions. Okay, does this make sense? You kind of have this whole thing on your back of your formula sheet memorized now. All those ratios and understanding for the unit circle only, we can kind of leave the R out because it's one. Okay, so this whole page deals with values from the unit circle. So R is 1. For everything that we do, so we can kind of just drop it. Okay, so this was grade 11, this question. Figure out the value for the sine of 210. So again... Like it would normally be y divided by r, but we don't worry about the r, so we just say, what is the y coordinate at 210? So what do you do? You go to 210, what's the y value? Negative a half. That's your answer. Negative a half. Okay, the cos, so on the unit circle, again, cos is just the x, because I'm not worried about the r, so I go to 5 pi over 6. So go to that spot and grab the x. So negative root 3 over 2. Okay, tangent. Sorry, there's no shortcut. It, you have to do a y divided by an x. Okay, so 330, you're going to have to do the y divided by the x. So this y divided by that x. So fraction stuff, dividing two fractions, so you're going to multiply, flip, Okay that you leave this answer, but 
technically they really don't like you writing radicals on the bottom. Um, it is fine, like if this was a provincial exam, I can award you full points, but be able to recognize that they might write it without the radical. Do you guys remember how to get rid of radicals on the bottom? So we did this in grade 11, we would just multiply it by root 3, and we would multiply this by root 3. So if we multiplied it by root 3, we would get negative root 3, and remember what you do when you do a root 3, root 3? Cancels, right? Okay. Um, secant. What did I tell you you could do with secant? Take the x, flip it. It's a reciprocal. So go to 7 pi over 6. Take the x and write this number flipped. So I flipped it. And I, I don't like negatives on the bottom. So again, we ran into a root thing. You can leave it. It's going to be full points. If they wrote it on a provincial, it would look like that. I just times the top by root 3, times the bottom by root 3. Okay, next one is a sign question. So I should know what to do, which is means get a Y. So what to do, Y, where. Now you got to figure out the where. Where is negative pi over 6? So you're going to go down to here, right? That's it. So what is the Y coordinate? Negative a half. Okay, F, what to do. So cosecant means to take a Y, but it's the flip of the Y. So that's the what to do and where to do it. Okay, let's talk about revolutions. So do you remember all this stuff? If you go to a pi, can we think about that as 6 pi over 6? Right? 1 pi is 6 over 6. If you go to 2 pi, that's 12 over 6. we got to keep going, right? What would be the next semicircle? What's the next over here? 6, 12, 18. What would be the next semicircle then? 24. Oh, so I don't want to do that. So where would I land? I would land in this quadrant because 23 is less than that 24, right? Okay, so over 6, so you're landing here. What are we doing? We're grabbing the Y coordinate. Upside down, flip that. Okay, do you notice how if it's negative, I keep it negative though, right? That, that never changes. Okay, so that's kind of a warm up, all those questions. Now it's going to involve doing that plus math. Okay, so here we go. Tangent, so the what is y over x. This one will be a secant. So the what strategy is to x flip. That's the what, and then you got to do the where part. So 315, here we go. We need x, or y divided by x, y divided by x, Does anybody know that number super quick? Negative 1. Negative because this is the same fraction, the same fraction. Negative 1. 
X flipped. So you're going to have to go to 240, X value flipped. And it says to times those values. There you go. Okay, last one, it says to take the sign, so that's do a y value. So that's the what. And the where, ooh, 20 pi over 3. Where are you going to be? So I'm going to count, you ready? 3 over 3, 6 over 3, 9 over 3, 12. What's the next set of three? 15, 18, 21. So where did you land? Which quadrant? You're in quadrant two. It has to have a three on the bottom, right? So you're in quadrant two with a three on the bottom, so you're at this one. And we're doing the Y coordinate So root 3 over 2, but then it has this on it. We got to take that trig value and square it, okay? And again, you have no calculator. You have to be able to do this by hand. Okay, so what do you get when you square radicals? Drop the radical. There's your answer. Okay, so the what, the where, and then there could just be math involved. Lots of the math involves fractions. <coughs> okay, let's do some together in your workbook. All right, page 15, question three. Okay, cosecant. So the what is, hey, that's the flipped Y. Sine, the what is to figure out a y value, and a cos is to figure out an x value. Okay, 11 pi over 6, that's right on there. So 11 pi over 6, y value, but flipped. I'm going to do it over 1 just because I can probably would deal with fractions. Plus, okay, negative 3 pi over 4. So the where, where are you with negative 3 quarters of the way to a pi? Negative 3 quarters of this way. <coughs> Did you land there? So what am I doing? The y. So negative root 2 over 2, and then, but I have to square it. Plus, okay, 23 over 3. You're going to have to think about the rotating, rotating, where do you land? So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. 24 or so. I'm in quadrant four. Okay, so I'm in quadrant four. Okay, we need this angle then. Five pi over three spot. What am I doing? X value. So just one half. Okay, let's square this. Okay, I'm going to let you square it. Think about negatives. What happens with negatives squared?
I could reduce that, but I'll just leave it right now. So now I'm going to add fractions. So I need everything to have the same bottom. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'd have to four times this. I'd have to two times that. Okay, so we see how the math can get you there. You have to square things, add fractions. Okay, let's um, let's go to I don't know where else looks hard here. Go to page eighteen. Okay, page 18, this would have been the last question of your homework assignment. So, we're going to do this part first. What is the sine value at negative pi over 6? So, can you get me a number for that? Negative pi over 6, and the sine value, are you getting the y value of negative a half? Did everybody get that value there? I went to negative pi over 6, boom here, and what y value? So I'm going to rewrite this question. So it's going to look like this now. What is the cos of negative 1 half, and there was a pi beside it? So this is the new question now. So what and the where? You're going to do a what? You're going to get an x value and you're going to go to negative a half of a pi. So what is the location if you go negative half pi? Are you at the bottom? What's the x value? Zero. Bless you, bless you.